Good afternoon, everybody. I see it's three o'clock. Um, we're expecting a few more people, so I'm just going to give it a minute or two uh, before we officially start, just so maybe there's uh, some people that uh, still want to log in. Yeah, I think uh, we can get started. So um, good afternoon again, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar hosted by Whited Scientific together with our brand new supplier, Suricare Suricic. The topic of, the, of today's webinar is to take back control of your NGS workflows and standardize with Suricic NGS reference materials. Before we start, I just want to go over some housekeeping. First of all, the webinar will be recorded and we will share the link with all attendees. Um, I'm not sure if uh, it was asked to insert your email address um, during logging in, but um, if you would like to be part of the survey or um, if you would like to be contacted afterwards, please do put your, uh, your email address in the chat. Uh, it will make it easier for us to reach out to you. Um, everyone will be muted. Um, if you do have any questions, please feel free to enter that into the chat box and we will address either on the spot um, or after um, uh, the presentation is, is finished. So let's see. Okay. Today's webinar will consist of a, of a short introduction by myself um, as to Whitehead Scientific, and thereafter I will hand over to uh, hand over the mic to Sarah Care to provide an overview of, of the company as well as the exciting products available to standardize your NGS workflows. So let me introduce myself first. Um, I am Jacques Depria. Um, I am currently the NGS product manager for Whitehead Scientific in South Africa. And I will be also be joined by my colleague Ram Santam, Santanam. He's the senior director of product marketing at Seracare and Seracic. Um, and we will basically be um, driving today's proceedings. So let me jump uh, straight into Whited Scientific. For those of you who don't know us. Um, we are a leading provider of quality life sciences, consumables and instrumentation. And we pride ourselves in our products, the expertise that we bring to the table and the support. So if we cannot um, support a specific product line, we will not bring it to market. Um, the company was founded 32 years ago. It's a privately held company um, and we currently have a team of approximately 37 people. You can see the six application areas that we cater for, going from molecular biology, cell biology, all the way to molecular di diagnostics and extraction sequencing, as well as uh, laboratory plasticware and um, small lab equipment. So we have, uh, we're a proud supply, uh, uh, a distributor of the, um, the, the following um, supplier list. As you can see, it's an extensive lift, uh, list 
we do select our suppliers carefully um, and we've recently um, added to the portfolio as you will see now so the current existing portfolio um, we have product lines going from optical mapping to fragmentation to um, uh, size fractionation hla typing forensics based on ngs and uh, pre um, genetic uh, implantation screen, uh, screening pre implant uh, uh, pre implantation genetic screening sorry for that so um, we also recently added two exciting supplies to our portfolio, namely Swift Biosciences, which mainly focuses on the library prep um, part for RNA DNA or for the Amplicon panel, specific Amplicon panels, and for also as a specific clinical genomics platform to interpret the data that you get from your NGS um, runs. And today we are very proud to announce that we have added Seracade to our portfolio. We, we already have our, our re representatives of the KPL range, but now we have also added Seraseq. And without um, any further ado, I would like to hand over to Ram um, to provide an overview of the company and the exciting products that they have on the portfolio. Thank you, Ram. Thank you, Jack. Okay, can you see my slides? I can, yes, Ron. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, all, and uh, thank you to Jock and the Whitehead scientific team for inviting us. Uh, we're extremely excited to be joining. Uh, we realize that these are extraordinary times. Uh, so first off, our thoughts to you. I uh, hope you're handling through the COVID uh, situation okay. Uh, and we're extremely excited uh, that we can actually do our part, uh, not only for infectious disease, but about clinical genomics. Okay. So the agenda today, again, as uh, Jock mentioned, uh, we'll talk about LGC and Seracare, the background and history. Uh, I think it's really important to understand where we're coming from and the expertise we bring to the table. Uh, and more importantly, the importance of reference materials. Uh, we really want to leave you with the, the idea how these could help you with your assay. Uh, then we'll get into the products, the clinical genomics product overview, uh, we'll focus on products and, and, and a quick snapshot of the customer applications. Uh, obviously, we'll be having follow-on sessions that get into the details of each of these products. Uh, and then Jock and I are happy to take questions at the end. Uh, or as he mentioned, uh, please enter those in the, in the chat box. Okay, so who are we? Uh, as as SarahCare, independently for many, many years now, well over 30 years, uh, we've been supporting advanced diagnostics, right? So the one thing I want you to have in mind as you listen through this is as you're doing your assay, how do you really know the end result is accurate and consistent, right? You're daily getting a bunch of unknown patient samples with different conditions, and you're doing your best with the assay and giving a result to the patient or the clinician. How do you really know these are accurate, right? And that's been in our DNA, <laughs> uh, no pun intended, in our company for the last uh, 30 plus years on these advanced reference materials, right? So we started our journey in the late 80s uh, with the HIV-1 crisis, with a lot of serology products, right? And then moved into molecular testing as we moved into the 90s and the 2000s, right? HIV, HCV, and we'll, we'll touch on that in a few slides. Uh, and then today, obviously, we're a big player in the clinical genomics play, space as well. And keep in mind, our customers often go through this journey, right? They're exploring, they're developing assays, then they validate and adopt an assay, and then you want to have it standardized in the marketplace, right? You want to serve your customers daily for their needs around infectious disease, uh, cancer, and so forth. We're very proud to announce, right, obviously a year and a half ago, uh, LGC, which is a, a large company out of the UK, uh, acquired Seracare Life Sciences, right? And you can read more about it on our website. So where are we today? Pretty amazing, right? We, we have a really broad portfolio of clinical diagnostic solutions today, right? As you know, Seracare really has a really strong foundation in the infectious disease space, right? We've tackled every single virus and, and, and epidemic that you can think of, uh, from Zika to Ebola to dengue, uh, through HIV, uh, HCV. Uh, obviously, five years ago, we started on this journey with uh, clinical genomics. We've launched well over 100 products uh, since 2015. These products are used daily by hundreds of customers worldwide, 
right, in the areas of somatic cancer, liquid biopsies, non-invasive prenatal testing, uh, inherited disease, as well as infectious disease. And, you know, it's an unfortunate, uh, obviously, pandemic today with uh, COVID-19, uh, but we've been front and center uh, doing our part with the SARS-CoV-2 reference materials. Uh, these actually launched in a matter of six weeks, right, from, from mid-January when we knew about this uh, potential pandemic uh, to a late March release of the, of the product, right? So we have a set of reference materials. We also have a validation panel, and we just recently launched the serology, right? So we really are able to move very in a nimble manner on any sort of uh, infectious disease or clinical diagnostics problem, right? And, and put, put a nice solution together. So what's the history of LGC real quick? Uh, it's actually a, a, almost a 180 year old company, which started in the, in the 1840s uh, as, a, as a part of the government. So lab government chemist uh, is, is the name. Uh, and then over the years uh, in, the, in the mid nineties, the company really became private, right? It was still very, relatively small with less than 300 employees. And the idea then over the years has to be really be the market leader in standards. So think of any asset, chemistry, molecular, NGS, you need standards, right? So the company has really very carefully sort of expanded its portfolio over the years. And obviously with the investment in, in, in Seracare, uh, we now have a big play in the clinical genomics. So well over almost 3,000 employees now and, and well over 400 million pounds of uh, revenue, right? So we're used to supporting hundreds of customers worldwide uh, for daily needs as well as development needs. So what do we do? Our motto is science for a safer world, right? Nothing more apt than, than the situation we're going through today. And so we've really taken a very systematic approach to having products in the quality assurance side reference standards, proficiency testing, clinical diagnostics, then moving into the genomic analysis tools, right? Not only the products that we're gonna talk about today, but also oligonucleotides, enzymes, right? And we can synthesize these things, we have instrumentation, and then obviously a big play in the drug development and solution space. And obviously today our focus is gonna be one part of the reference standards with, with our Seracare, Seracare portfolio. So now zooming in now, so as part of the big LGC corporation, we're part of the standards division and within which we're part of the clinical diagnostics business unit. So just be aware that we carry a lot of biochemistry, serology, molecular, KPL reagents, as Jock mentioned, uh, and the biological materials. Today, obviously, the focus is going to be exclusively on clinical genomics on, on the bottom right, obviously covering all of the areas we talked about, tumor profiling, liquid biopsy, and all the way through infectious disease. So I know most of the audience here is familiar with NGS, but I wanted to give you this perspective, right? So we obviously know that the genome is the complete collection of our 23 pairs of chromosomes. There's 3 billion base pairs, right? So think of that for a second. There's massive amount of information hiding in our genomes. And the idea with all of the sequencing projects around the world is to map each base. And the key thing is to find that difference to a reference genome, right? Hunting for variance is the primary goal of sequencing projects, right? So keep that in mind as you think about whole genome sequencing, whole exome, or targeted sequencing. The idea is to find a needle in the haystack, right? So it's a very complex problem, right? And here we are trying to help with that. So keep in mind the assays from vendors really focus on finding these clinically actionable variants, right? They're looking again at a certain gene for a certain variant, you know, for example, the T790M variant, in the EGFR gene, or perhaps you're looking for an RNA fusion, like email for ALK, right? So the idea is you have a hypothesis from the doctor or the patient on what the issue is. You have an assay, and the idea is to find it the best possible way, no matter what the frequency is, okay? Very challenging problem. So this is the recognition, and, and uh, Whitehead Scientific obviously has a lot of products across this workflow, right? So unlike the molecular tests or the point of care tests, NGS is inherently very complex, okay? So from the first stage on the left, when you get the sample from the patient, you have to extract it, you have to analyze, you have to sort of shear it and make it into smaller fragments, things like the Covaris, right? You have to do QC, you have to obviously there's the sonication step, right? With, with uh, different sort of fragmentation, enzymatic, uh, as well as uh, mechanical. And then you have to sort of clean up, do your library prep, which is very arduous process, and then you do sample prep and get on the sequencer, right? 
So many different steps in the, in the workflow. And then obviously you get your report after the sequencing and you make your variant calls. Okay? So inherently we recognize that you're using a workflow that has multiple vendor components, greater than 30 QC metrics, could be, could be a lot more. Uh, there are a lot fewer IVD reagents. Obviously that trend is changing with, with things like IVDR and, and the 510K in the US. Multiple platforms, how do you really know? If the Illumina platform is working okay or the thermal platform, right? So you are facing a lot of challenges managing this on a daily basis, right? And our job is to make this easy for you. So why are reference materials important? Right? Stop and think about sort of the workflow as you get through and a development into an assay launch. Right? In the very beginning, you're spending a lot of time pondering, am I really picking up the best technology? <clears throat> am I developing and optimizing the right protocol right? and the analysis pipeline? Right? It's, it's obviously a lot of choices. You have different instrumentations, different protocols. How do I evaluate and compare platforms? And assays and and we feel these truth sets as we call them the reference materials are a very critical player in the beginning okay if you don't know what you're getting how are you going to proceed with the assay okay so in, in this stage you want to really get confidence in your assay accuracy and the ability to call the expected variance okay? so before you open up your lab for patient samples you really have to know that you're producing the right result often that could take a few months to, to even a year right and then when you get into validation QC now, you now have a protocol sort of figured out and, and validated, right? You're not thinking about both clinical validation as well as analytical validation. So the goal in this step really is to make sure that you thoroughly confirm what your protocol is actually doing. What is the specification and is it actually meeting it? Obviously you wanna do it quickly and at, at, at a lower cost. You need access at this point, it's very critical for characterized, clinically important variants. These are hard to get just from your freezer or from hospitals or labs, right? That's where we come in. These need to be patient-like materials. It's not important just to have a, a sort of a cell line mixture or, or other materials. These really need to represent the patient sample and the variant sequence encounter. And ideally, we just talked about the workflow in the previous chart. You need to make sure that the material represents everything from step one through the final step. Once you've done that, you have your regulatory compliance, right? So think about this is now growing worldwide. It's no longer adequate for you to just have a lab developed test. Uh, a lot of regulatory bodies are not being very stringent. It's very important to, for you to get the assay validated, right? So you're submitting to your uh, local authority to, to get approval. Not only that, you have to maintain ongoing compliance. So they're going to be doing audits once a year, once, once every couple of years to make sure you're doing well. And it's important for you to know things are working well. Not only was it working well on the day you launched the assay, but is it working well six months down the road, right? When you change instruments, change operators, and so forth. Obviously, you're in business eventually to operate your lab. So if you think about the clinical lab operations mode, you want to now ensure consistency, right? Is my T790 call today the same as it was yesterday? And it's going to be the same next week when I have a new operator. Right? perhaps or a new assay or new reagent model, right? It's about the consistency, reproducibility, high quality. You wanna eventually have confidence in your results that you give to your clinicians and patients, right? Your reputation and the patient lives are hanging in on the balance based on your result, right? Do you have cancer or do you have not can cancer? Do you have a trisomy 21, right? Which could lead to different decisions for the, for the patient and the, and the mother. You eventually wanna deploy best in class QC programs. And, and we play a huge role in this. So now if you think about just summarizing everything we talked about, right? There are three different sort of needs that you have typically. You're either developing an asset, right? You're developing and optimizing a protocol uh, over a few months. You then want to validate, right? The validation goal obviously is to ensure that it works as designed. And then you want to open up for operations, right? You're ready to accept samples from clinicians and you want to monitor your daily run performance, right? That's critical. The next thing is, it works beautifully no matter who you are and where you are, right? You could be one of these people. You could be in the IVD environment where you're developing assays, instrumentation, you could be in the pharma, right? Obviously, you could also be in a reference lab, which is a large lab that accepts samples all over the world and to process them quickly. You could be a CRO, 
working with the pharma community, right? Uh, and then you can be a clinical lab. Many of you are probably in a clinical lab environment, in a hospital, a medical center, a cancer center, so forth. Or you can be a proficiency provider, right? Where you're independently assessing samples. So no matter where you are, what we found is we have a lot of success stories and you'll see this theme come through uh, as we go through the presentation today, right? So when you're in the IVD OEM phase, obviously your goal is to develop the best instrument and or reagent assay kits, right? And you need the flexibility from our products, right? To scale over one or two years, depending on the timeline, to sort of meet your needs and make sure you get through that validation phase. If you're a farmer, you're obviously screening for uh, assays and drugs. It's very critical that you get the right result. Obviously in the operation mode, you're in a clinical lab environment, you're QCing your kits, uh, your, your reagents, and we help, right? So our single product can actually help you through all three of these phases. Obviously, when you're in a reference lab environment, you're more focused on validation, and obviously your primary focus in the operations mode is quality and consistency, right? That, that, that's your top sort of two things that keep you up at night. <laughs> when you're in a clinical lab environment, what you're often doing is you're validating many assays that have been developed by the IVD OEMs, right? And you want to quickly service your community. You're a cancer center. There's a lot of patients that have, you know, a tumor and then lung cancer. Question is, how quickly can you assess that sample? Right. So routine QC becomes very important. And finally, when you're in the proficiency mode, your job is to really help us independently assess the quality of our assay. Right. So you're squarely in that validation bucket. So our catalog products, as well as our custom capability, really helps you through the entire sort of life cycle of where you are no matter where you are and who you are, okay? I'll pause for a second to see if there's any uh, questions in the chat or live, okay? Okay, so we'll, we'll switch gears now. So now that you have a, a good sense of, you know, why reference material is important and who can use it, let's dive right into the product portfolio today. So it's been an incredible journey for us at, at uh, LGC Seracare, right? In five years, we started this journey saying, you know, cancer is an important field, right? It's a lot of uh, unsolved problems. Uh, reproductive health is, is another critical area with uh, non-invasive prenatal testing. Inherited disease is something we all uh, carry, right, in our germline. Uh, and obviously infectious disease, as you can tell, uh, really morphs every few years, right? There's a new virus, a new epidemic, to, to handle, right? So we very systematically over the last five years developed products in all of these areas, right? We currently carry over 90 active products. So feel free to obviously go into seracare.com and, and, and cruise through the products, okay? So at a high level in the cancer bucket, which is on the left side here, we're focused on somatic cancer, right? Which is by far the number one problem in the, the market, right? Unfortunately, many of us are gonna get cancer. So it's very important to really profile our, our tumor samples to, to indicate, is there a DNA variant? Is there an RNA variant, okay? Liquid biopsy is a growing field. It's a proxy for a solid tumor by looking at the cell-free DNA, the circulating tumor DNA in your blood, right? And obviously the blood cancers are big, right? The, the hemonc with myeloid being one of the bigger areas. You also hear a lot about tumor mutational burden, which is a, a, a new biomarker for immuno-oncology, uh, and they have a lot of products in that area, both solid TMB, and, and blood TB development. We really focus on diverse variant types. We realize that there's not a single variant. There's single nucleotide variants, there's indels, there's copy number variants, there are fusions, right? There are multiple formats of samples you get. Sometimes you're looking at plasma, you're looking at FFP. So we've made sure that not only our variants cover all the actionable variants, but they also focus on the different types, right? So you can use it in your lab across that, that workflow that we talked about. Same thing in reproductive health, we focus on non-invasive invasive prenatal testing with the common trisomies, microdeletions, so forth. We're also looking at pre-implantation genetic testing, right? So these are new products planned for later this year. Obviously, inherited cancer, breast cancer is, is, a, is, a, is a main focus in a big area. Uh, BRCA1 and BRCA2 are in our products, focus on cardiomyopathy, and we have other custom variants that are available. And infectious disease, obviously, it's a, it's a very important area in, in, uh, in your continent right, with HIV-1. Obviously, we have drug-resistance products that are done synthetically. So these are non-infectious products that can focus on both NGS applications. When you're looking at very rare variants, down to 
or you could be doing a traditional Sanger testing at, at a 20 to 40 percent uh, frequency, right? The beauty of all our products is we have a set of catalog products, which are these 90, but we can also customize these products, right, based on a particular assay or need. So one of the things we really focused on five years ago is to make sure that we have an extremely scalable and a robust process. So with our R&D team, right, we really spent a lot of time with intellectual property and development, right? So we, we filed obviously IP and patents for, for a lot of these. And we came up with a, a very simple, elegant and a powerful sort of method, really, right? So, and you'll know more about the differences between this and other options in the, in the market. So what we essentially do with any of our products is we synthesize the variant of interest in an 800 base pair sort of fragment, right? So we generally put the variant right in the middle and there's a plus or minus 400 base pair on either side of that, right? So that's step number one there is to really focus on the clinical actionable variants and, and, and synthesize them, right? For things like copy number, we can obviously make the full gene, be it MET or ERBB. And then what we then decided was we want to have a single background into which these things can be spiked in, right? And so we took the well-characterized genome in a bottle, a GM24385, as the white type background. So think about this, right? You're making these variants in a certain frequency, you're spiking it into always a single common background, right? So we're very precisely able to meter these things, right, in, in, in the product. And what you get is a single vial that has multiple variants. So it's almost like you have all these different sample and data points all in a single vial ready to go, right? Either in a plasma or a mix or FP format, right? So we really spent a lot of time honing this and we continue to improve this technology and product, right? And we decided to do digital PCR testing. So step number five, it's very critical to know that you put the right amount of product, right? So we do digital PCR testing, that's our gold standard. Obviously we supplement that with NGS testing, right? And sometimes Sanger to, to verify the constructs. With ctDNA, as we talked about, we're gonna touch on that a little bit later, it's very critical that these things are fragmented and sized like mother nature, right? So these are then fragmented and blended uh, into the 160 base pair fragments. So let's now dive into each of the sort of the products, right? In the somatic oncology, we really focus on immuno-oncology with uh, TMB. We have solid tumor, which, which by far is the flagship sort of area. Everybody's working on solid tumor, tumor profiling. You're looking at DNA often, you're looking at copy number variants, you're looking at RNA, right? So solid tumor RNA is a very critical area, uh, be it fusions, right, or things like NTRAC. Uh, and then liquid biopsy is a very grown area. We've seen that in the last three to four years, extreme pickup for our products. We have multiple products and multiple variants. And then obviously we talked about the heme. Again, so let's dive right in. So one of the approaches we took with any of our products that you're gonna see today, is to really not just quickly come up and develop something and, and put it out there in the market. We really took the time for all our products to spend time with the experts, right? Whether it be the TMB, where we formed a partnership with Friends of Cancer Research, uh, places like IQ and Path, which is, which is fairly large in Europe. Uh, and then we put together our own working group. And you see all the players on the right side, right? These are all players that are re really huge in our industry, uh, with tremendous exp experience and expertise. Right, Friends of Cancer, Roche, Illumina, the Broad Institute, AstraZeneca in, in Europe, right, and so on and so forth. So we really took the time to work with the experts to say, what variants would you like to see and what levels would you like to see and why? Right? We have the technology and the know-how to build it, but we really want to have the experts weigh in on this. Right? This is what led to all our products. And I'll give you a snapshot of the power of having a reference material sort of in this following a couple of slides, right? So we have two different formats for the, for the TNB. We have a GDNA product that comes in different sort of scores based on whole exome sequencing, and we have an FFP, right? So we've done the hard work for you. So you can actually jump in and say, okay, you know what? Give me a low and a high, and you're off and running. And here's the power of the data that I just touched on. And let me focus for a couple of minutes on the chart on the left side, right? So here's, here's what's amazing about the reference material. Same exact reference material sent to eight labs, right? And these are the eight labs that you see there in sort of randomized order. 
right? So look at each of those clusters, whether say 7.2 or 9.5 or 20.1, look at that variability. Same exact material, right? The dotted line represents the, the whole exome sequencing score, and that's the 7.2. Look at, look at the assay result. People are either calling it a nine, nine and a half, right? Or you're looking at three there, right? So you're looking at all these different assays that produce wide results, right? From the same exact product. So this is the power of having a single reference material that can assess the variability across different assays in different labs, right? So the labs are always excited to see this result, right? Across both the GDNA on the left side, and then you see the same thing on the FAP on the right side. So this theme really emanates through all our products, right? You can only assess your workflow in your assay with a common standardized material. And then you can change whatever variable, operator, lab, methodology, instrumentation, and you can clearly see what the impact is, right? So keep this in mind uh, as you think about the power of these reference materials, right? Switching gears into the solid tumor. Again, we have two different product types. We have a tumor DNA mix that has all of the variants. So we, again, we, we took the time to really figure out what are the right variants. So we have 40 variants, right? Highly multiplex products. These are very clinically relevant products. They have SNVs, indels, and, and, and structural variants. And these are provided all at 7% or 40, 40 variants at 10%, right? And these are all provided in a, in a single vial. Or we've also done a tri-level tumor mix. These are 40 variants now that are very selectively done in the three different frequencies. 13 variants at 4%, right? 13 at 10%. Again, you'll have a really good sense of what's going on in your assay with a single product, 40 variants. These are all the variants, right? And again, you can look up this information on our uh, website as well. And we talked a lot about digital PCR validation. This gives you a really good sense. We looked at all the 40 variants in the product, and those are the ones across on the x-axis, and you see the, the different tiers there, right? The ones that are at 4% or hovering around four, the ones that are at seven around 7.1, the ones that are on 10. So we know that we've put in the right amount of the variants into the product. The question is, what do you get out of NGS? It's obviously normal to expect some variability there, right? But you can independently assess that on a daily basis. So this would be the power of doing these type of control charts in your environment on a, on a daily basis. Okay. Switching gears now from DNA to RNA. So think about it, with RNA, obviously these are not fusions. These are longer sort of constructs, right? So we've come up with a very sort of innovative method to synthesize these RNA, right? So we make them in DNA, we transcribe them into RNA, and we're actually able to engineer them. We're able to transfect them into that GM cell line we talked about. Right? in different copies. So the beauty is this acts now like a real sort of RNA fusion, right? which you're not going to find right, yeah. from labs or hospitals or <laughs> cell lines that easily. Right? So these can now be used you know, as a full process control in, in your assay, just like you had a real sort of RNA fusion there. Right? And these are not compatible with various targeted amplicon base and hybrid capture, right? part of the things that are carried in the, the Whitehead portfolio. Again, two different formats, right? So this is a common theme. We want to give you all the variants in the appropriate formats. We give it to you in a sort of a mixed format, which is after extraction, so you can run through, right, the post-extraction step uh, as, a, as a mix and a buffer with 18 fusions that are shown on the, on the right side. We also make the same exact product as we talked about in, in an FFP format, right? So depending on where you are, if you're developing an assay, you probably want to use the FFP, and if that's the sample type you're encountering, you want to use that if you're if you're just getting samples, right? Uh, obviously from from tissue or or, or uh, uh, selfie DNA or so forth, you can obviously use these in the mixed format. This again is a good example, right? Again, uh, there's a there's a lot here, but I want to take take out sort of the key points in the bottom of the left side and the results highlights, right? So obviously we have 18 fusions, and we center around these six labs in an inner lab study. And guess what? They all found those 18 fusions. So right off the bat, you get confidence that your assay is picking up all of these relevant fusions, right? Number one. Number two, you're like, okay, can I actually detect them at a low input? How do you really know what, 
what do I need, right? You often hear, do you need 10 nanograms? Do you need 40 nanograms? Do you need 100 nanograms, right? So you can get confidence in your asset. You can actually do a nice little experiment by sort of using lower and lower input amount and see if you still pick up those fusions, right? So this is a good example of the power, again, of, the, of these reference materials. Gives you confidence in your, in your assay. Right, so now switching gears, I know we're covering a lot of products, but uh, we wanted to give you a good snapshot of, of all the products here. It's the circulating tumor DNA reference material. Again, we spent a lot of time here in the beginning to say what technology and how do we design this product? How do we sort of mimic mother nature, right, in terms of the profile? Right, so we took obviously the same genomic DNA background. We're able to make, synthesize these variants. So you saw that in the previous slides about the 40 variants. We're taking the same 40 variants in this example of this product. We're able to fragment them and blend them very precisely, right? Encapsulate them with a proprietary method. So this now acts like a, like a cell. So you have to run through your extraction. And then you put that in a synthetic plasma. So there now, right, the single vial now has plasma, has these 40 variants that are at that sizing that you see on the right side, right? And we spent a lot of time honing in the profile. So what you see in orange there is the native cell-free DNA, right? If you randomly share a product, right, using your, uh, you know, machines and, and fragmentation devices, you will generally get a very broad sort of profile, which is represented in that, in that sort of the green, right, if you will. And then the blue is, is, is after we do the, the work to, to make sure we hone that sort of profile, right? So our products really mimic that orange, uh, ultimately, is what you want to do. And apologize for the color scheme, and it looks a little, a little different there on the screen. Yeah. And then we have two different types of products, as we talked about, right? We have the version two product that has 40 variants done in six different lead frequency blends. So one of the things you realize with CTDNA is most people are comfortable now to say their limited detection is around half a percent or one percent. What we found is it's really helpful for you to have a ladder, something really high, like two percent come down to 1%, 0 0.5, 0 0.25. So the beauty of this is you can quickly find out, hey, I'm picking up the two and I'm picking up the one, but it looks like I'm not picking up some variance of the 0.5. Then you know your LOD is around that 0.5, right? So that's the beauty of this. And these are all the, the, the 40 variants that are in there. And you'll recognize, right, all your favorite uh, genes and variants in here, right? Look at that EGFR, you have the JAK2, you have the KRAS, the NRAS. So we really took the time to make sure that only the clinical relevant variants make it into the product. So this is a good, another good example. Here is New York Presbyterian, right? You can imagine a lot of the hospital environments are using this product. They wanted to validate the assay, and they're really curious to know that, am I going to really pick up something at one nanogram, right? Obviously, most of the time you're using 10 to 20 nanograms, but they were very thrilled that they were actually able to pick up in their assay down to one nanogram input. And you see that on the, on the chart, sort of on the left side, and it says one nanogram input, okay? And they're very happy they were able to pick up the projected LE frequency, right? Was matching with the, the observed, right? The projected is what our product is, the observed is what they got. They're very happy again, this is sort of a linear relationship with that. So they were able to use this data to submit for their CLIA approval, right? Again, New York State has a very rigorous uh, requirement. Same thing with now with another product, right? We worked with Friends of Cancer Research and NIH, and we realized that we could have a different product that has more sort of targeted variants, right? That, that matter to sort of tumor profiling. Hence, we launched the CTDNA Complete, right? Again, using the same underlying technology we talked about, two different formats, a mix, which is the MM, and the plasma, which is the RM. Now we looked at a different set of variants, that this one has 25 variants across 16 genes, all again, very clinically relevant across SMEs, Indels, seeing these, and we did the same thing. We went a little higher this time because a lot of people told us that, you know what, my tumor profiling assay is good down to 5%, but anything below five, I really need to have confidence. Five, two and a half, one percent. Obviously, most people now are comfortable at that one percent or 0.5, but again, it's a nice ladder product. Right? Same kind of size and profile. We make sure we give you plenty of, of replicates in a while. And again, these are the 25 variants that you'll see there. Again, you know, you look in the BRAFs, 
You can look at some of the copy number variants we put in, the, like MET and the ERBB2, uh, and some of the structural variants at the, the DNA level. Okay, again, another good example. Uh, this is Paragon Genomics that was helping people with the assay development. Their goal again is, can we claim sensitivity, right? Uh, down to sort of point, point 0.1. So they were really thrilled. They can validate their variants at, at that low frequency. And you can see a snapshot of the variants that they're looking at on, on the right side, right? Again, I think we use this data points to validate our product and improve our product. So often when we do our products very quickly, Right? We go based on sort of market knowledge. It's very early in the market, and we use the data points to do a version two or a version three, right? So we're able to improve our product. We touched on the myeloid. So we have two different products again. We have a myeloid sort of DNA uh, and a fusion RNA. Same type of thing again. We worked with the experts in the beginning, uh, including people like Bob Daber, and we make sure we pick the right variants in here. So these now have 23 variants that are clinically actionable for myeloids. We did the same thing with fusion RNA. We put it in in what are representative copies, right, and size that you could use easily. Uh, and again, this is something that we did work with Thermo Fisher in the beginning to validate the, the DNA, right? So on the right side, you can see all of the, the 23 variants, and you can see how they kind of tier between 5% at the top, 10% at the bottom, and 15%, right, at the, at the sort of the very bottom. And you can see on the left side, these are some of the snapshot of variants they looked at. And they're happy to pick these up at the expected uh, frequency. Okay? They're happy that you, you told me it was going to be 10%. I'm picking up close to 10 or 9 or 11. Okay? That's what you want to see there on the chart. Again, this is the validation for the RNA. Okay? Again, these are the sort of the RNA variants, fusions that are included in the product on the right side. And on the left side, we obviously looked at the uh, the digital PCR copies, right? Again, to show you that the right amount of products are being quantitated and going into the product. So let's uh, pause for a moment and think about what are your options, right? So obviously, when, you, when, when you're a customer uh, and, and facing the situation, what are your options in the marketplace? Obviously, you could work with third-party vendors like ourselves, right? And there's a combination of cell line approaches, the approach that we talked about uh, with NGC Seracare, and obviously people like Horizon, right? The confidence that you have working with a third party vendor is it's an established source of material. You're not having to sort of dig around in your, in your freezer, you can actually go with a consistent and reliable supply. You can support a range of platforms. We've done the work for you to make sure these are compatible with, with, with you know, whether PCR or NGS or, or Sanger. And these are surrogates for patient samples, which are hard to come by. We do realize that not every lab has access to these. Right? So this is obviously a big advantage for you to rely on a third party vendor like this. We do recognize that a lot of people want to do homebrews, right? So these are remnant samples in your lab, right? You may have detected a certain variant, you have material remaining in, in your freezer, or you can sort of buy different cell lines from different folks. People in the US obviously buy from places like Coriel and you can create your own mixture there. Right? It's very unclear regulatory guidance which is what creates sometimes confusion, right? In, in the market, there's unclear sort of regulations and mandate on controls, right? So that's the, the challenge with that. And then what we call is the do nothing, right? Again, it's hard to admit that sometimes we don't <laughs> routinely do QC. There are a lot of labs that are not using it routinely. They may use it for validation, but not for routine QC. They may only use built-in sequencing controls, which really doesn't give you the, the power information we just talked about in the last 20 minutes, right? And often people very myopically, I would say, think you know, these, these things are very expensive, right? And what we find is in the long run, your total running cost is actually lower with, with quality materials. If you can troubleshoot faster, if you can have more confidence in your assay, if you can launch an assay faster, it's well worth it and pays off much more than the cost of the, the reagents. Right? So let me spend a little bit of time here to to compare our seroseq versus the cell line, which is one of the common options there, right? So obviously we talked quite a bit about the biosynthetic spike in. That is probably the most powerful advantage. So if you think about cell lines in general, you have to sort of find these cell lines that have all these variants, which is extremely difficult. You have to CRISPR engineer, which can be extremely expensive, right? So one of the things we spend a lot of time 
the first feature here is a biosynthetic spike in, is to make sure that you get patient-like performance from this product. Right? That, that is very critical. That mimics your patient sample. Right? And obviously, we talked about the advantages of cost effectiveness of these uh, materials compared to CRISPR. You're able to really precisely maintain that elite frequency in the, in the product. Right? It's consistent. You don't have to worry about these things. Right? These are consistent from lot to lot, and that's what we do. And we manufactured these in an ISO 1345 environment. Okay, so let's jump right into reproductive health, which is obviously a different area. And uh, I think many of you are familiar with this, right? The common trisomies like trisomy 21, 18, 13 are the ones being detected largely. Uh, and then people are now moving to these other conditions like micro deletions, sex chromosome antipoides, and so forth. Okay. The challenge in the marketplace compared to all the other things we talked about is there's many different types of methods being used. So the challenge is how do you make a one size fits all, right? So I'll, I'll just leave you this to get, get you an idea that there's lots of different tests in the marketplace. These first generation tests on the left side, and then you see these SNP-based, array-based methods like Roche and Natera, right? And then you have the non-NGS, obviously Venatus in, in, in Europe, right? From Perkin Elmer, and, and there's a lot of companies out there, right? Like uh, Prometha Health, Eugene Health, obviously now, uh, and then you have the second generation methods in the bottom from Illumina, right, the Verisig. So different assays and different methods, how do you know which one's working better? Again, we've spent a lot of time, right, honing the technology. So very similar to that CTDNA story we talked about, we actually source, uh, on the right side now, source plasma that consists of maternal and fetal cell feed DNA. We've come up with a very sort of innovative method that we've uh, patented uh, and extracting these materials amplifying them so we can, we can make more and then encapsulating them and putting them to plasma. So these are now as close as you can get to just go into a, a clinic and just getting a confirmed trisomy 21 or 18 or 13 sample. Okay. Again, two sets of products. You have the unmatched products where the maternal fetal are not related. They're 21, 18, and 13. They're largely male samples only. And we've launched these second generation NIPT V2 products uh, in the last few months that now really get at that matched characteristic. So when we say male and female uh, fetal, uh, it's related to the maternal sample, right? So we've been able to source that actual sample from a pregnant woman, so it maintains that related uh, relationship, makes it easy for the SNP-based and the array-based assays. We now can cover both male and female in many cases. We cover things like micro deletions and also have it on a custom basis for sex from so definitely contact us if you need any of these materials. Quick example of how these, again, very powerful to see this data, right, repeatedly uh, on how these things are helping, right? So this is an example of Anatis, uh, which is a Swedish-based company now acquired by Perkin Elmer. They were in the early stages of assay development, right? And they want to really get a sense of what their limited detection is. Most people think it's around four and three, and as you can tell from the chart, they were very happy that they were able to pick up a 2%. Yet you can see that the cluster of dots at that 2% line right above that, that dotted line. Right? So they were extremely happy that their assay was much more sensitive than they, than they thought. Right? So their limited detection is around 2%. And this is a published paper that you can see the source at the bottom. Another example, right? and I'll focus on the right side there. Uh, this is a lab in, in, in Paris that was looking at obviously uh, lab server, as it says in the bottom. These people obviously process daily samples. They were extremely excited, and you can see in the, on, the, on the right side here, right? You have the red line, which is the limited detection. Anything below the red line is negative samples. Anything above the red line, you see those dots right above that 16 uh, Z-score, those are positives. The nice thing was our negative sample, which is in that red circle, was behaving just like any other negative sample. And our positive sample, was behaving like a positive sample, right? So the minute they saw this data is when they said, okay, we need to use these materials <laughs> as our daily control. Okay? So again, very powerful data that shows the value of these as a routine QC. Obviously now switching gears, inherited disease, we apply the same concept that we talked about in the tumor profiling. The only difference with these inherited is we blend them at a 50% frequency, whether it be inherited cancer with the BRCA variants or cardiomyopathy. Again, some powerful data from people that have used the product. 
right? And you can see in the back, in the right side, the, the, the quotes from the customer, right? Same thing with cardiomyopathy. This is a very seminal paper for us from the Journal of Molecular Diagnostics from 2016 that really concluded that these are indistinguishable from patient samples, right? So if you're wondering why are these synthetics good, this is a good example of a paper that says it really performed neck and neck with, with a known patient sample with the same variant. And importantly, obviously, HIV is a, is a sort of a big issue that we've been facing for the last 40 years. So we have our HIV-1 drug resistance products that have 49 clinically relevant mutations. So just about all the variants you can think of, right, for which there's drug cocktails available. These combine, these are non-infectious, then a recombinant virus, the blended in a 1%, 5%, 20% uh, frequency, right? And uh, these are also available for, for Sanger as well. And these can be customized. Right? We, we can extend the sequence, we can look at HCV, uh, look at other runs. And this is the same exact technology that went into our COVID-19 product. Right? So very powerful sort of technology. We also carry sort of high titer viral isolates. These are actually infectious material right? for cases when you do need them. These are all the products that are available. So definitely go through our website for these. Um, and this again is a very powerful data. We do this every single time, as you can tell. We work with leading sort of uh, experts in the field. Uh, this is Dr. Miguel Quinones. Uh, he uses the case lab. He looked at it on a MySeq as well as an Illumina platform. Extremely thrilled to see this data, right? On the x-axis, you see sort of the, the, the frequency, right? Um, and then on the, the detected observed frequency on the, on the y-axis. Again, what you want to see is on our 1% product, He's pretty close to that. Obviously, he's pushing the limits of uh, sensitivity. But as he climbs up to the right, you can see generally they're picking up the right frequency, right, across all the different sort of regions of the HIV genome. OK. Um, in conclusion, right, LGC and Seracare have uh, over 30 years of experience. We just talked about the fact that we think about this daily on how to make reference materials that mimic patient samples and we are providing quality control solutions uh, and we're going to continue to grow and, and, and expand into different areas. The Seraseq itself, as we talked about, is a unique and market leading solution, really, you know, imbibes all the things we talked about. These are extremely patient-like, these are highly multiplex, so you get more data points from a single sample, you don't just get one variant, you, you get up to 40 variants. These are extremely scalable, we can look at new application areas, we can customize it, we can support multiple applications, as you saw, right? Tumor profiling, leukobosy, and so forth. And, and these are really perfect solution now. In, in the last five years, hundreds of customers are using us for assay development. You can use it for validation, or you can use it for ongoing QC. The beauty is it could be the same product that scales, or you can sort of customize it as you need it. And we're extremely delighted now. Uh, with Jock and the, the Whitehead scientific team, they have local support uh, in South Africa. Okay, thank you for your attention, and uh, we'll open it up for any questions uh, for either Jock or myself. Thank you very much, Rom, um, for a very informative presentation. I don't see any uh, questions that have been, been typed into the chat box. Um, we did expect a, a, a bit of a bigger audience. I think uh, we'll share the, the recording um, far and wide. Um, and I'm not sure if anybody in the existing audience has any um, questions. Feel free to ask. Yeah, and one of, one of the things that, that obviously come up, right, and the, and the reason why we launched these sort of catalog products, uh, is sort of how do I get started? And so think about sort of where you are in your journey, right? Are you are you developing? Are you validating? Uh, are you struggling with sort of monitoring your assay, right? Uh, often that'll sort of uh, give you a clue as to what area you, you, you need help in. Think about obviously the application area, right? Are, are you doing tumor profiling? Are you doing liquid biopsy? And then what you can often do is with these products, we make sure that the right variants are picked for you. Right, so you can sort of plunge in, talk, talk to your, your your teammates, and then the Whitehead team on how to select the right sort of product. 
uh, and you can get started very quickly. These are off-the-shelf products that are available. Rom, I think you explained it very eloquently, so I don't think we have any questions. So um, I want to thank everybody again for uh, uh, for attending. Thank you, Rom, for the willingness to do the presentation, and uh, I wish everybody a great uh, evening ahead and day wherever you are in the in uh, on this globe. Yeah, thank you all, and have a good uh, afternoon. Bye bye.